The Club Championship Show on OTB Sports in partnership with AIB, proud sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships. Hashtag the toughest. Welcome along to the Club Championship Show here on OTB Sports in association with AIB. February is club final month. We now know the full composition of the All-Ireland Senior Finals is going to be a special K-Day at Croke Park later this month when Kilku will go up against Chemical Crokes in the All-Ireland Football Decider. Also on the show today, we will be talking to Dunica Boyle and to Tommy Rooney about this weekend's club finals at intermediate and junior level spread across Saturday and Sunday at Croke Park. We're also going to be talking in the next few minutes to Chemical Crokes forward Shane Horn, who laid on the goal crucially scored for them by Craig Diaz in their victory against Porrick Pierce's our focus last weekend was very much on the All-Ireland Club Senior Football Semi-Finals the results from those games last weekend uh, we had two fixtures played one went to extra time a win for Kilku after the added 20 minutes by one goal and 18 points to one goal and 13 against St Finbar's nine different scores for Kilku in that game and Kilmico Crokes overcoming Porrick Pierce's of Roscommon in Breffney Park by one goal and 11 points to Porrick Pierce's 8 points and crucially for Kilmico Crokes they scored the last 5 points of the game to come out on top and book their place back in the decider where they will be hoping to win their third All-Ireland title Kilku going back to Crow Park for successive seasons uh, but for the second time in 2 years having lost out to Cora Finn after extra time in the decider in 2020 to look back on those games and also to look forward to this weekend I'd say firstly I've got Tommy Rooney from the football pod with me Tommy how are you getting on? Well, how are things? Looking forward to this this week. Yeah, two games that weren't exactly classics last weekend, mm. but compelling affairs, given the red cards in Port Leash, given that it looked like Kilku had won the game twice late on, but then had that free overturned when Aidan Brannigan was sent off, eventually showed a little bit more in extra time. And Chemical Crokes, and we'll talk to Shane Horn about it in a moment, digging it out with a good finish in the last quarter of the game to ensure that they're going back to Crow Park. 100%. I think... I think we saw the real cuckoo in, in extra time. I thought St. Finbars were exceptional how to put it up to them. Um, and I think it's not the last we'll see of St. Finbars. They obviously had a great era in the 70s and the 80s and had a lean spell since. I think we'll be seeing St. Finbars back. It's a competitive championship in Cork. They will be back in the mix coming down the line. They've got a real good core of uh, strong footballers there, big men um, in that team. But then Kilku in extra time. I know we'll talk about it a little later, but for me, Conor Laverty comes back on in extra time, and the way that man used his hand passes in extra time was just, it was a delight. It was an example about how you should hand pass the ball. Always into space, always into the path of a runner. Um, and it made such a big difference in extra time when, when Kilku really showed their class. And then on the other side, in the Kilmacud Pierce's game, I think Kilmacud showed their class. I think Kilmacud really delivered. There was no, do you know, like with, with Bally Hill Shamrocks and the Hurling a few weeks ago, we're kind of wondering, like, you know, they needed to get out of jail cards. Kilmacud controlled that game. And um, I think Pierce's will probably look back at it and maybe regret not throwing the shackles off a little bit more, maybe approaching it in a slightly different manner. Um, I felt like they were pretty evenly stacked. Maybe Pierce could pull off a shot going into that game. But I thought Kilmacud was so impressive in the way that they managed it and just killed that that Pierce's uh, that Pierce's attack. Yeah, well, the one point before we bring Shane Horn in, Tommy, is that Chemical Crokes don't really allow teams to throw the shackles off. You saw what happened mm. with Nace in the second half of the Leinster final. You saw the way they were able to shut down Port Arlington in the second half of the semi final. And again, a mean defensive display from Chemical Crokes in Breffney Park last Saturday evening. Like to keep Porrick Pierce's, who've been fairly free scoring, we talked about it last week, how they've upped their scoring rate down to eight points in the entire game. Yeah, it was really impressive. And like, Paul Carey was on a hot streak of form coming in. He's, he's in and around Anthony Cunningham's plans for this year. Um, very highly rated in Roscommon. He showed what he could do against Knockmore. He shot the lights out. Hubert Darcy is a very powerful uh, attacker. Brilliant left foot. And But but on top of that, it wasn't just that. It, like So many of Pierce's scores come from the driving forces of the dailies and their half-backs and David Murray coming forward. And... They just weren't able to pull that off with the same punch that they've been able to do through Roscommon and through Connacht. And they just came up short against it. As you said, a really mean croak setup that Robbie Brennan has them motoring really well at the minute. Well, so I'd say we've got Shane Horn with us from Chemical Croak. Shane, good morning to you. Hi, Will. How are you? When it comes to this and we talk about you know, how good you've been defensively over the last three games, and particularly in the Leinster final and last weekend, how much of that is about defending from the front as well? Because as a half forward, you're asked to get through quite a bit of work rate to stop the likes of that Pierce's half back line coming up the pitch. Do you take satisfaction as a forward in being able to, you know, keep teams down below ten points in matches? Um, yeah, I suppose we've kind of 
trying to, as you said, attack from the front or defend from the front and uh, get hands on. I suppose if, if you're getting pressure on the ball, the kick passes going in aren't as, aren't as good or, or, or mightn't be as accurate and the kids are back so an extra chance. But um, yeah, it's definitely something that we've, we've targeted this year and I suppose you try to do it. I suppose when we had the water breaks, we were trying to kind of gauge every quarter and, and, and keep pushing on. Um, so it's something we've tried to uh, to do because at the end of the day, if, on the flip side, if, if we get turnovers higher up the field, you, you're probably in for in for goals or in for scoring chances a bit easier than having to work uh, your way all the way up the field. So um, yeah, it's definitely it's, it's definitely helped for us. It can be no coincidence when it's a trend that you've been finishing games strongly, whether that was Wolf Tones, Port Arlington, the Leinster final against Nace, that second half showing, that very good showing in the last quarter in Breffney Park at the weekend as well. Uh, you must be happy with how you've been closing out games over the last four. Yeah, we are. I suppose we've tried to... Um, a lot of different things can happen in the game, but I suppose we're always quite quite calm and composed. Um, I know probably since the Dublin Championship and the Jews game where we kind of... We took a lot of comfort in the fact we, we were composed there and, and we got the results. Um, right or wrong, I don't know how tight it was, but um, yeah, it's definitely given us confidence just to kind of control things um, and, and manage the games out. And uh, I suppose the, the, the squad we have, I know the, the games you've probably only seen maybe 18, 19, 20 of us, but there's, there's a really strong 30, 32 there who um, are pushing things on. and. When we bring in lads um, to, to drive it on, um, yeah, it's, it's really helping us. And some of those experienced players as well, Shane, have been so important. I look back at 2011, I was looking at the All Ireland semi final team sheet against Cross McGlenn. You got Craig Diaz and you got Rory O'Carroll playing on that team. Both of them were excellent at the weekend. Rory's name man, man the match. You laid the ball on for Craig for his goal. Uh, now that they're finished with the Dublin setup and 100% committed to Kilmico Croaks, they're huge players to have on any club team. Yeah, yeah. And like, um, it, it's great to have them around the place. I know, I suppose, the year can be quite long and, and even just to have them around the place to, to kind of say the right things or, or kind of gauge the mood, whether we need to kind of push on or when we need to... Um, you can find sometimes through the summer you're kind of going through the motions and then you, you need something to be said to kind of click and, and get yourself into gear. And I suppose we've been pretty much... Oh, what on, on every two weeks since probably August. Um, so you're kind of you're just trying to get into a routine, and, and and it's nearly the talk, and that's more important than the the exertion on the training pitch or, or even in the matches. So yeah, no, it's great to have them around. And then Mark Vaughan is still there, um, uh, passing on guidance as well. So no, it's great to have great to have these lads still involved even after losing. They've got a lot of guys probably since uh, I know it's been mentioned since we won in 2018 obviously lads like David Nestor um, Pat Burke and things like that so now we still have we still have good leadership there from the, the older guys and, and to be honest a lot of younger guys have been around it, around for um, for a number of years now so it's a, it's, it's, it's a good group How much of a motivating factor has 2018 been? Because it seems like after every game Robbie Brennan gets asked about Mullen Yachtin it's you've put that to bed by winning the Leinster title and now you're back into an All-Ireland final was it talked about much about 2018? Not the fact that it was a loss against Mullen Yachtin, that you were big favourites going into the game, but that it looked like you were on a fairly good run that year and the potential you could be All-Ireland champions. A bad performance comes along and you end up missing out. Has 2018 been used as motivation this year, Shen? Um, a bit, but n- I suppose none of us really mention Mullen Yachtin. It seems to come from, from other people, mm-hmm. but it's more just, I suppose, on, on a performance level. We didn't perform on that day, or, or we did for maybe 44 45 minutes um, and then we switched off and probably why people thought we had a good chance was because we were performing well and then we didn't perform and we got caught out so it's, it's more the performance I know at the end some games it's nearly just get over the line whereas I think we're just trying to put in a performance and I think we know if we do that we're, we're in with a shout um, in, in most games so I think that's been more the focus the last the this year and, and probably the last while. Have you been impressed by Kilku when we talk about that challenge that's going to be at Crow Park in a couple of weeks' time? This is a team who've been motoring really well 2020 season, could have beaten Cara Finn in an All-Ireland final, got the job done uh, last weekend. I'm sure you'll be doing the video analysis and everything over the next couple of weeks like about their performance against St Finbars. But I know here on the show we've been really impressed by them. It's a hell of a challenge coming up in that All-Ireland final now. Yeah, no, I would have seen a good bit of them, I suppose, over the last number of years. Um, just watching their games on TG Carry, you can see they're a well-drilled outfit. Um, 
work for each other. They're, they're kind of strong, trust strong through the lines. Um, I can get scores all over the place. So you know, you, you can't not be impressed. Um, but I suppose similar to every game, we'll just have to go out and and um, see what we can do what we can do to kind of stop them. I know against Pierce, is, I think it was mentioned, that a good, strong half back line. So that's why we tried to get to get hands on as much as possible. And Kiku will probably be a step up on that similarly yeah, from their defence. So, um, yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll drill down into them now this week and um, yeah, hopefully be able to to combat their their strengths and, and then do our thing as well. Shane, looking at the um, the Kilku, Kilku Finbars game, Kilku's performance in extra time was so important and they obviously have history of going down the stretch with Cara Finn back in 2019 or, or sorry 2020 um, how important will scores on the bench be for you guys you got four points on the bench the last day what's that like as a forward when you've ran your legs off and you've lads coming in and they're, they're tagging on a couple of scores yeah it's huge and I know even just from my own perspective in the half forward line that position can be um, a lot of up and down and you're nearly trying to track back to help the defence, but you want to end up on the the end of things as well to get a few scores. And I think for all of us, the strength of the squad we have, any of the guys coming in, you nearly know not to save yourself. So it, it is a case of every day you're going out there to empty yourself for the, the first 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it will be. And, and then guys come in and, and when you're on the pitch and, and, and these lads do come in, it's it's a huge lift because you know they're going to drive it on and you nearly get a bit of a, a buzz off it to, um, to to lift yourself again. So, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. been huge for us. And then um, it's it's just, I suppose, towards the end of a game when you're, you're kind of tired, you know, you need those those fresh bodies just to kind of reset things and, and kind of um, help help see the game out really yeah and come here you mentioned Mark Vaughan there I'd be interested to know what Mark Vaughan is like as a coach because infamously when he was thrown in for his league debut down in Kerry he hadn't a clue who half the Kerry boys were or Aidan O'Mahony when he would be marking that day um, like did that uh, Mark Vaughan as a coach like, what, what's he bringing to the table like what's he showing the forwards yeah he's 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 got better at names I think Um he, I, I know he was playing and he had to stop just due to injuries a couple of years ago and he would have got involved with our minors and I think that was his first kind of exposure to kind of coaching or being a selector or helping out and then when he came back in it, it was to play and it is to play um, but he's just, I think there's a couple of little niggles there so he's just um, he's just trying to help lads with confidence I know he would have been a, a very much a confidence player himself and he's just instilling in all of us especially in the forward to look take your man on, get shots off um different things like that and then the, the, the younger guys obviously they know who he is and he's just um, you can see um, even if he is injured he still comes out and kicks a few balls in the warm up or whatever's going on so um, you can see he still has the, the class but no he's look, just looking to, to help guys kick on and, and, and probably that confidence piece I mentioned Paul Mannion officially ruled out of the final by Robbie Brennan after the game last weekend. How much does it then become a case of, as a forward line, you have to spread the scoring load a little bit more, like given any team would like to have Paul Mannion in it, uh, but not having him now, is that just a case of everyone else having to add an extra few percent in the forward line to make up for his absence? Yeah, I don't think we've done anything different, to be honest. Um even when Paul was there, regardless of what other five forwards we put in, it's we, we think it's quite strong. And I suppose the, the benefit of, of him being there is you probably, the uh, teams probably don't notice the rest of our forwards and that gives other guys just that extra bit of space. But no, I think we're all, lads are all happy to work hard, uh, chip in with a few scores. I suppose at the end of the day, we try to give the ball to the man in the right place and, and that could be anyone. Um, I know it's, yeah, Paul being injured is, is we don't have him on the pitch but um, he, he's great to have him in the dressing room again and, and I know he's probably a bit sick that he is injured um, but he's definitely helping um, definitely helping the background similarly just kind of driving lads on trying to, to coach us through the, through the game at half time and things like that so uh, to, to be able to have him around even is, 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 is brilliant And Offaly manager John Mon was saying a few weeks back it's unlikely you're going to come back in with the Offaly football panel for this year is that a case you've had your wedding just a few weeks ago? You've had a good long run with Kilmacud. Are you looking at a year out or are you looking to finish up with Intercounty or what's your thought process on it? Um, I'm pro probably finished up, to be honest. Uh, just at the end of last year, uh, obviously, I didn't know how far we go with Crokes, but um, obviously had the, the wedding and then we were due to go away in, in March and April for a couple of weeks, uh, which would have been in the in the season. And um, I just wouldn't have been able to commit as, as I needed since then, obviously, we've been winning with Crokes and I ended up moving jobs as well <laughs> about a week ago. So uh, just the, the commitment and time won't be, won't be there to, 
to, to do the intercounty again. But um, yeah, no, the, the lads have been great. Even when I told them I was stepping away, and they've all been in touch. Uh, before and after, say the Dublin final, the Leinster final, so um, you know, a great bunch of lads. One last question to ask you about: Pat Flanagan is throwing a couple of shoulders before the row happens in the tunnel. He sees you and he puts his arm around you and gives you a bit of a hug. Was that a case of an Offaly man not wanting to hit a now former Offaly footballer, or what was actually said to you when Pat came over to you? Yeah, it's funny because the lads are saying to me, "Oh, it's a Midlands thing," and I was like, "Geez, I didn't think it was that." But um, <laughs> no, I was. Uh, I just saw him. Uh, give Dara a little dunt on the back and then I just kind of patted on myself and said settle and he was like I know I know so that was uh, that, that was all that was so there was no kind of um, yeah awfully thing there I don't think Right no favouritism at all but look Shane the best yeah. of luck getting ready uh, for Crow Park in a couple of weeks time and taking on Kilku Ok cheers guys Shane Horn sure. there talking to us about Kimiko Croke's win last weekend. We can hear now from Robbie Brennan the manager of Kimiko Croke who officially ruled Paul Mannion out of playing in the final in two weeks time Well, I can tell you that what Robbie Brennan was going to say in that clip when he was talking to TG Carr was that Paul Mannion is a fantastic safety blanket, was the word he used, Tommy, uh, to have mm. him around to play in games like this. He joked about the fact that they were going safety to try and blanket. get him over to Lords uh, to try and see if he could yeah. be back for two weeks, but it doesn't look like he's going to be back. He said there was an it's acceptance. Um, Tommy, once he had the knee injury and decided to go for surgery, that he was out till probably late March or early April. So it looks like we're not going to see Paul Mannion until the Dublin Club Championship gets back underway later this year. It's a pity for a final not to have Paul Mannion involved. Oh, it's a huge pity. Like, talk about one of the best footballers in the country, regardless of being a club footballer in the county, you know. Um, like, it, it does sound like he's out. We have seen miraculous recoveries before, um, whether that be any sort of a role. Like, maybe maybe with a knee, you just can't see any role being played by Paul Mannion. Like, talk about a comfort blanket. Like, he is, he could be the difference when it comes to Kilku. Like, Kilku is going to be a challenge that like Crokes haven't faced yet. It's going to be a brilliant game. Um, but, like, losing Paul Mannion is, is massive. And actually, I knew you were going to play a clip of Robbie Brennan there. He was also speaking and saying that Kilku are, are definite favourites. Do you, do you feel like that? It certainly feels that Kilku are favourite here but are we underestimating the might of Crokes yeah I don't think that's Yerism by saying that Kilku would be mm. favourites based on the last couple of years but this Kilmacud team alright they haven't necessarily blown a team away so far they haven't necessarily sparkled with some of the performance that they've had but look at the games where they've had to come through a relative amount of adversity that game which was so tactical and low scoring against Jude's in the Dublin final the Port Arlington game in the Leinster Championship particularly where it looked like with Port Arlington's first half performance, they had Crokes in real trouble. Crokes were able to adjust, change around the kick out, yeah. get out of you know the hole they dug themselves in the first half with their poor shooting. Their accuracy has improved. I thought they were a lot better in front of goal uh, with their Manion shot selection very, last week. Mannion was very important in that second half against Port Arlington, wasn't he? He was. Like, once he opened his legs, he added an extra dimension to them. And I think when a game stretches, and maybe in an All-Ireland final against Crow Park, that's where you might miss him most, is say if Kilku start to tire from their counter-attacking style, if you're Kim mm. Crokes, you would love if he got a turnover to be able to feed the ball into Paul Mannion with an amount of space for him to be able to use his pace to be able to run at that Kilku defence. Because it's not like last weekend St. Finbars didn't get plenty of joy. They were able to get into good positions. Generally, they were picking up fouls in scorable areas and then having an excellent free taker like Sherlock meant that he was able to put the ball over the bar and keep yeah. them right in contention right until the end of the game. Like People were really hot on Kilku going into that semi-final but Finbars can probably look back and think they were unfortunate not to win in normal time. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when like Finbars had a good start and then that brilliant goal from from Johnson mm. like, and you're like, okay, Kilku are just going to take over here. But as you said, like what I was really impressed with by from Finbars when I watched the game against Stacks in the Munster final down in Semple was the spread of scores that they had and the, the style of scores that they got from play they were working them really well and uh, yes they rely on Sherlock so much in the freeze and when you have a player like that that's a comfort blanket Stephen Sherlock like that free he kicked in the 62nd minute to level the game up that is a clutch score and like it just had the legs you were watching them lining it up and I think actually for the first time that, like I realised then how young Stephen Sherlock actually looks. I actually thought he was, you know, a, a bit more of an elder statesman um, that had been knocking around a, a bit longer. Like, but he just in that moment, as the cameras were on him, and you knew this was his kick, his big kick to level it up. Even though Kaku get a chance to win it, he just looked really young in that moment, and and the relief on his face when he celebrated as it just dropped over the bar. Um, 
Finn Bars definitely will come again. Brian Hayes had a massive game in that Munster final. Um, you know, uh, there, there's other players there that probably get get more score. Like Conor McCricker didn't really score at the weekend. Um, he'd been doing serious damage in the in the build up to it. So like Finn Bars will come again, and I think they probably did show a couple of chinks in the Kilku armor. But once Kilku, as we said earlier on, got on top in that extra time, they look at their their maturity. Like this is a team that have won eight or nine down titles in a row. Like they played Ulster football, they know exactly how each other play. And Conor Laverty was the master of it all in extra time. Um, they were just very impressed with the way they came through it. It is going to be a great game with Kilmacco Crokes, and it is such a pity that Paul Manning isn't there because yeah. you want to have the best players in the field. You really do. No, definitely. And look, I think in Kilku's case, they were helped by a combination of factors. That a red card happens just before the end of normal time. You still get to play with your full complement of 15 within extra yeah. time. I'm sure that's something we can argue about over and over again. And then the two red cards for St. Finbar's when the game is starting to stretch went against them because Finbar's then mm. naturally had to try and push up and had to try and attack more and that played right into Kilmico, or sorry, into Kilku's hands. And you know, we talked about this uh, last week with Finton when we were previewing the game. Kilku have shown that they can get the job done against different styles and it's going to be a very difficult Kilmico Crokes defence to break down because... I've been yeah. the most the thing I've been most impressed about with them, and I'm sure Dublin would love to have Rory O'Carroll back with the way that he's playing defensively in the last few games as well. They might, is, they might have to get him back. I tell you, you'd be making the call right now if you were Desi Farland saying, "Look, go enjoy Crow Park in a few weeks' time, and maybe take a break for a week or two and see if you want to come back in towards the end of the league." Because he's been excellent, and yeah. again, he's been carrying the ball out excellently for them as well, orchestrating that defence, and they are so so hard to break down, Tommy. Yeah, no, they really, really are. And, um, you know, Shane was talking there about the manner in which they've combated, like, Pierce's defensive style. Pierce's and Kilku, they're, they're not a million miles away in, in, in terms of the, the manner in which they set up. But I just think Kilku are probably the standard bearers for that kind of style of play, that counter attacking style of play. Um, you'd imagine Kilmacud will be very, very happy to be patient on the ball in, in ways that Dublin are at the minute. You, you, we've seen that with them. They'll spread the ball across the field. They'll try and play on the counter as well. So they are, are probably right in saying they're similar enough styles. Um, I think so. In the I, manner think, of, I think so, yeah. I don't think either team is going to be necessarily going out to the, the front foot and trying to push the agenda too yeah. much. I think they'll both be happy enough to soak pressure, wait for the space to arrive and then accurately play the ball out. But look, Crow Park last weekend we saw it last Saturday Tommy yeah. where Armara sitting back they wait for Dublin to make a mistake they spring a couple of kick passes and next thing the ball's in the net at the far end in about five seconds so you can be incredibly effective yeah. if you're good defensively and then you use the ball effectively when you get it back yeah 100% it just struck me the other day as well like James McCartan has come in at, at down obviously and he's, at a, he's come in late and by all means, it looked like they'd put in a decent showing against Derry, who probably weren't firing on all cylinders the other day. So it'll be interesting to see what James McCartan can do with Down. But how on earth can Down operate without the Kilku contingent? Mm-hmm. Like, and like they, they haven't really been involved at county level for a couple of years. It, it remains to be seen whether McCartan will get back to Johnson's. Like Shailen Johnson is a really impressive footballer. Michal Rooney there is playing really well. Never mind the Brannigans. Like there's 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 three or four to pick from there as well. You know, like Daryl Brannigan is is just in sensational form at the minute. So that really struck me the other day watching Cuckoo was like how how much how much of a force down could be once more if they had that core of Cuckoo players to build a team around once more. But that's kind of that's kind of the difficulties when you know you've got a leading club in the county who aren't involved until maybe March or April or maybe there's issues going on in the background that we don't know about you know yeah it's easier to carry maybe a couple of players if they're not involved at the yeah. start of the league than if you were bringing in a, a large cohort of them which Kilku players probably would based on their club form let's hear from the Kilku goalkeeper then Bobo Kane who scored two frees two of his three frees within the game in extra time to help them to that five point win against the Bars it's the nights away from the football field and you're practicing on your own and to be honest, when you when you're hitting kicks to God, you don't really notice any, anything around you. You know, you just stick to your routine and and hope they'll go over. And you know, fortunately, two or three of them went over and and look at it, and it helped. It helped us push on and you know got us over the line. But you know, it's only a semi final. There's nothing won yet. So we're back at it in the morning, recovery and 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 train Monday night. And the fans here were something else from from both sides. Yeah, yeah it really was electric. Now yeah. today, it was it was different. The the songs were really being sung out loud. How yeah. did you hear that from oh, the pitch? Hey, fair play to the Finbar supporters. Actually, good crack, you know. <laughs> so yeah, they had everything, you know. So uh, they did well orchestrated, no. But hey, look, fair play to them. Uh, 
you know, it's their their journey's only starting. Yeah. To be honest, they're yes, they've a couple of uh, older boys there, but the heart of the team's young. Mm -hmm. You know, if they stick at it, future's bright. But yeah, the supporters was mad at times. And was, they were shouting and roaring, and you try and hit a kick out. You know, it's not easy. <laughs> And say, and so you're one step away from the goal. The goal is the All Ireland final. You were there in 2019. You left it behind just that day. That's what a few of you said to me after the Ulster final um, a few weeks ago. So you're really hoping to really get over the line this time. Yeah, look, uh, we'll we'll assess it. A couple of years ago, it's still hurting. You know, there's no, I'm not going to lie about it. But we've given ourselves an opportunity. We're there, and look, we're in the final, and that's the goal in All Ireland, and that that's it. And what about for you? You're a media master now after the last day. We, we had the chats and you went viral. I think I'm a face for radio, the boys were saying. <laughs> and Conlet there, your coach, as he was walking away, he said, don't say anything about going out and don't say anything about pizza. No, no, no. I actually, t t I'm not going to lie to you, we stayed down last night and at me and an boy went for a pizza at 12 o'clock. And I actually, I actually think it helped me. <laughs> Pizza before yeah. the game. Yeah, I had a pizza last night, so uh, it paid off there. I think I've burnt it off. <laughs> mind you, but you burnt I, it off with all those runs for yeah. the freeze up and back to the goal. No, I'm a goalie, so I don't like running at the best of times. But look, I have the time to get over the line. That's the most important thing. Niall Bobo Kane, there you go. Carb loading in Port Leash with pizza the night before the game, uh, where they eventually came through by five points after extra time. And nice to see uh, the new seats are in in time for those uh, semi finals which were played in O'More Park last weekend as well. We're looking forward now to Crow Park this weekend. I'd like to say we're joined by Donica Boyle, who's with us too. We look forward to um, a feast of football and hurling this weekend. We've got the intermediate and junior hurling finals, which are on in Crow Park on this Saturday. And we'll look forward to the junior and intermediate football, which are on Sunday afternoon as well. Donica, how are you getting on? Good, Will. How are you? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to these uh, finals coming up this weekend. Plenty of interesting stories along the way. And we might kick off with 3 o'clock, TG Carr's YouTube, if anyone wants to watch Cork's uh, Ballygiblin up against Moon Coin of Kilkenny. Moon Coin back into the final, having been there in 2017, where they lost out to Mayfield of Cork. Uh, that time around, it's Cork opposition again. But we're looking at a Cork team who, at junior level, have come through this year. Donegal won their first Cork title, first Munster title. They've got... Dara Flynn, from their perspective, hopefully fit. He was on the bench the last day. They didn't need him against Full and Gales because of their very comfortable victory. Uh, but also, the slayer of Kerry a couple of years ago in a football final, in Mark Keane involved as well. Two kind of interesting names to have for uh, Bally Giblin going into this final on Saturday. Yeah, I, I think um, like this is people talk about Sean Kelly and his legacy and Rule 42 and all that. But I think the junior and intermediate finals that he sort of formalised them, if you like, and brought it into. Um, uh, brought it under the, the auspices of the, of the GAA because for a few years before that it was actually just run by a couple of clubs around the country I think there was one in Monaghan maybe the Cromartin Club um, used to run off the the, the, the finals um, uh, oh, it's probably going back 15 or 20 years maybe at this stage but uh, this bringing this in and, and for these types of stories for these places that maybe a lot of people would never have heard of and, and Bally Giblin would probably fall under under that for a lot of people they're twinned with, with Mitchellstown is basically the, the football side of it, and 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 as you mentioned, Mark Keane is is the story here. Like he was, he was playing um, AFL, or certainly was set to play uh, Aussie Rules in 2022 until a few weeks ago. He decided he'd had enough. He was coming home. He won a Munster Club title over over uh, when he was back, and now he's in in the All Ireland final in Crow Park. And I, I always wonder what what brings lads home. And obviously, homesickness is, is one thing, but days like this with the club are literally irrepla ir irreplaceable. You know, I suppose the likes of him would have been brought up with this sort of stuff. The chance to win, the chance to go to Crow Park, you'd be dreaming about it. And they just seem to have a real sort of wave of momentum behind them at the minute. And it sounds like Mark Keane came back in at, at just the right time. And he, he's gone straight back in with the with the, with the the core callers he was involved in in a couple of challenges last month as well. So um, he's, uh, he's obviously a serious operator, even though he's been away from the game for a few years. It's a hell of a diversion within his career too to have gone mm. from being in the AFL for a couple of seasons and then making the decision to come home this year. People may have thought he'd go directly back into the football panel after his heroics at Porky Cueve, but by all reports, and I was talking to a couple of friends who saw the Full and Gales game, he's a very, very good hurler. Yeah, he he played both underage and, and maybe that time he went back in with the footballers just because he was home for a couple of weeks, but... The, the, the peculiar thing is that people always say that if you're away for a while and you, you lose your touch and you're not you don't have to hold your hand every day that you know that you know it's it leaves you very quickly whereas might, you might be able to get back into 
into football a little bit easier. And even if you think about the mechanics of AFL, you know, it's it's catching and kicking uh, slightly different, but it's still the, the broadly speaking, it's the same thing. Um, Hurling is, is is different again, and they obviously taught in Cork that he was good enough to to go back straight back into the panel because. I, I, not too long ago, I spoke to Aidan Walsh about going from one to the other in terms of, you know, maybe trying to do both and then trying to do just hurling or trying to do just football. And he just said, like, you are effectively getting in your own way to some extent, but it's gone to such a level now that you can, uh, that you have to concentrate on something. And uh, But in fairness, they obviously in Cork think that he's ready to make the step. And you can only imagine that, um, now I haven't seen them, but you can only imagine how how influential he's going to be for Bally Gibbon this weekend if he, if he can go straight back into uh, into a, a Cork senior setup. Yeah, there were two very one sided semi finals that worked out. Um, Bally Gibbon were one twelve to a point up at half time in Port Leash a couple of weeks ago against the UK champions Full and Gales, and then Moon Coin are averaging thirty scores over the last couple of games. They beat Shamrocks in the Leinster final, uh, scored four goals that day. They scored two twenty six against uh, Salt Hill last time out, winning two twenty six to eleven points. They been to this stage before I said the outset I know it's five years ago now but a lot of that panel are still around um, it's probably no great surprise that this junior final has been dominated by Cork and Kilkenny and probably no great surprise that Moon Coin are back into this decider again especially given the form that they've shown over the last couple of months Yeah it's uh, it's it's heavily weighted towards the, the Cork and Kilkenny clubs and that's probably to do a lot with with the depth, the talent, I suppose, that's in those two counties. The other thing that's maybe slightly, um, and, and it has been changed a little bit of late, but the other thing that if if cert, there are certain in different grades, different counties, certainly over the last few years, there are moves to standardise it now. But over the last few years, that in the senior grade, one county you might have eight, ten, twelve clubs; in another county, you might have sixteen or more. So if you move down through the grades, then you know, obviously the team in one county might be let's say the the 18th 19th ranked team if they're in a in a junior uh, in a junior all ireland competition in another county they might be 28th or 9th or 30th ranked team so there is a small little discrepancy there but i think in the case of the kilkenny and and the core clubs i think that's just depth of just how far how deeply ingrained the game is in that particular county um it's no it's no um, accident that they keep uh, keep turning up in finals i think yeah, 5 p.m. start then for the intermediate final, uh, which is really breakthrough territory for Kilmoyley of Kerry. I mentioned these graded competitions coming in. A Kerry team has never played in an All Ireland Club hurling final until this weekend, and Kilmoyley be the first club to do so. Uh, mm. Managed by John Myler going into that game as well. Uh, they'll go up against the Nace side, who Damien Lawler's got the killer stat here on Nace. So back in 2015. Nay started getting involved in Kilkenny underage competitions in a bid to try and improve their standing. They played an under-16 hurling shield final against the great club Ballyhill Shamrocks. 11 of the players that were on the team that beat Ballyhill Shamrocks in 2016 in that under-16 game are now involved in the senior team in Nace. You can almost track directly a strong group of underage players being fostered. When it comes to player retention, Dunica, that's so, so impressive. It's it's very impressive. And, and the other thing they've done really well is that Big population, um, sometimes, uh, and where a uh, population sort of explodes quickly over the course of a few years, and you've seen that sometimes it takes the club in that town or village, it takes them a little while to catch up. They just, all of a sudden, they have a whole lot more bodies to deal with, more people to cater for, and maybe they just don't have the, the setup to do it. But NACE have obviously harnessed this very quickly. I was doing a little bit of reading about them before. I think the NACE CBS won a Leinster College's B title a few years ago. Um, Kildare Hurling in general they didn't this done uh, Wexford was it uh, a year or two ago um, yeah. and that Wexford team had you know 2019 I think minor winners uh, Lancer minor winners so um, they've obviously been coming uh, gradually and gradually and gradually and the Nays club itself then obviously with the footballers as well have had huge momentum behind them and these things sort of feed into each other you know it's just a feel good sort of thing around the club that just translates and then everyone wants to go to train and everyone wants to show up um, you know, like even talking about Kilmile, the same thing with Kilmile at the minute. They, they did a fundraiser there a few weeks ago because they've been on the road so often. And at the last time I checked it, I think they got to around eighteen thousand. So people were just like delighted to be behind it. People are the, the wanted to be part of this thing. So I, I think you see that throughout the club, um, throughout the clubs at this stage. I don't think they they'll want for anything. I think the level of excitement around there at the start of the year, like. It really is sort of bonus territory, really. Um, my own club had a, a short run in, in a junior uh, Leinster a few years ago. And you want to win every game, 
but everyone is delighted to be part of the whole occasion. And, you know, it's 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 kind of, it's, it's, it's a thing you can't really bottle. And as well as that, you know, it's only ever really, for most teams, it's only ever really one shot at it. So these things, these, these clubs we're talking about at the moment are in perfect situation. Um, and the Nace, in fairness to them, have, you know, turned, turned, seem to have done an awful lot of work with hurling in there and, and like long may it continue because the smarts behind getting into the Kilkenny League, behind getting into the schools, behind uh, working a, a dual campaign this year. It takes an awful lot of organisation, so fair play to them on that front. Yeah, a few players to watch out for this weekend. Uh, you got Mossy O'Connor who's in big goal scoring form uh, for Kilmoyle. You got both the goals in Beacon uh, where they won the game against Banner of Derry in the semi-finals. Uh, they're still waiting to see what happens with Adrian Royal who got sent off late in that game and is suspended as things stand. But I think his uh, hearing is due to be tonight or tomorrow to see if they can get that red card overturned. And Jack Sheridan was the big scorer for Nace in their semi-final. Uh, he got nine points of their 18 as they won against Torine of Mayo. All right, let's have a look forward to the uh, football games then. First of all, the uh, Junior Football Championship final. Two teams who won so heavily uh, last weekend. Uh, Kilmina of Mayo um, blitzed Clonbal Oak. Had one goal and 12 points scored very early on in the game. Uh, go up against Nigavilla of Kerry in the Junior Football final. That's half one on TG Carr's YouTube on Sunday afternoon. Dunica, who are you fancying in this uh, Junior final? Just going on the record of clubs and sort of going back a little bit to what I touched on earlier, you know, the Kerry clubs have won five of the last six in this competition. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's very hard to look past them. Um, like Nigel, I think, won this competition in 2020. So, um, yeah, they, they, they are the team to watch. I think they were in a, they got to the semi final of this competition, maybe in 11 as well. So, um, yeah, look, it, it's hard to look past Kerry teams. I'm pretty certain the Mayo team has never won this competition either. So, um, but in fairness to them, there was, it was 118 in, in the All Ireland semi final. Uh, they scored uh, in the Connacht final. They also kicked 118, which in January football and in 60 minutes is is very impressive and it can't be ignored. So um, you can't write off Kilmina, but just on, on just going on the record books and how this competition has generally went, you'd have to you have to go with the Kerry teams. I think generally. Well, Tommy Rooney, the reason we bring on two Meath contributors is because Trim are in the intermediate final. So you can tell us uh, the inside track here, Tommy, on how Trim are going to get on against Steelstown in the intermediate decider. That one is at half three and also on TG Carr's YouTube. Yeah, uh, well, Donica, how are you? The, the, probably the, the two oh. interesting things from this is, like, Naguil were probably very heavily fancied this week. They have such a strong core between the Barrys. Obviously, O'Cumber was injured. Um, Dermot O'Connor as well. Like, a, a strong Kerry core. And I think they kicked an awful lot of wides in that Sealstown game. And Sealstown grinded it out and scored a late penalty. So Sealstown have shown how they can win a game like that. Now, Trim and Folias in the other semi final, you were probably looking at it and thinking the Murtis from Roscommon have such inter county experience. I knew Trim would do well. I knew it would be close. When you see the likes of Aaron Lynch continuing his form that he had in the Mead Championship into the provincial setup, it's 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 encouraging from a Mead fan's perspective, especially when it took us 45 minutes to score at the weekend. Fellow like Aaron Lynch could be something that Andy McIntyre is looking at. But apart from that, one of the big things for Trim, and Donegal will probably pick up on this as well, they have seven or eight players that have played in Crow Park before. They've had the hurlers. James Toher is someone who's played both Mead football and hurling at inter-county level. They have a number of other hurlers. Alan Douglas has played for Mead. Um, Kieran Caulfield has, has been a very talented minor breaking through as well. So this is going to be a really good game. Trim are an exciting team in Mead. They were knocking on the door for a long time in intermediate, probably long overdue it. And uh, mm. you've, have you been impressed by them, Donica? Yeah, you, I think you kind of summed it up there. Like they, they, they lost an intermediate final in 19, and lost quite heavily to Noburn. I think they were fancy going into that game. They lost again in 20, uh, and then they got the job done this year. So they've been coming for a while. They also won a senior hurling title in Mead um, in 2020, I think it was. And uh, Tommy mentioned there, James Toher, Alan Douglas. They have a couple of fellas who are involved with the, the Mead Senior Hurling setup. And from coming across them at club level, the fellas, a lot of them play junior and intermediate football, some of them. And they're really well conditioned, the fellas who are in with the Mead Hurlers. And you, you can see it on them when you when you, when you you play club matches against them. And so those boys, well, James Toher in particular is a hugely physical man. Um, so... I, I think that will stand to them. The fact that we have a lot of big game experience, like the last two intermediate finals, they won the senior hurling final, um, uh, and and Kevin Riley is the manager. And Kevin's, uh, we had Kevin in the club. I think you might have been there that night, Tommy. We had Kevin up or a couple of times. Just yeah. really sort of smart, breaks it down into real digestible bits in terms of just small things about 
working the tackle and stuff like that. Just really smart, simple stuff and will literally come and show you what you're doing wrong with your feet or what you're doing. So you're very hands-on and very relatable, digestible stuff that you can pick up with, even in one night with him or two nights with him, you can pick it up. So I think he's someone, he, he thinks a lot about it. I'd say he's someone who will go on to have a good career in management. Um, Steel's having a great story. Like they're, they're from from the city, you know, well away from sort of South Derry where a lot of the, the football is played. Um, so, and as you touched on there, beating the Gale was, was uh, sort of one against the head. And I have a, I was reading a little bit earlier on, I think Ben McCarran, who's done a lot of damage for them, he got a hat-trick in his McKenna Cup debut in 2019 um, in a game, I think it was against Fermanagh. So, um, you know, they've obviously got a lot of football. But it's a great story, like, coming out of Derry, you know, where we're out of the city where, where um, you know, where football maybe doesn't have the biggest footprint. Um, and now they're, all the, they're going all the way to Crow Park. So, again, it goes back to, like, the stuff, the stories we get out of these junior and intermediate competitions are... Um, they're unrivaled, really. Now they have the very limited niche appeal, but I think for the weekend where they do get their get their moment, I think that they're well worth paying attention to. Yeah, really looking forward to this weekend, Donica. Thanks a million for joining us on the show. Thanks, lads. Cheers, uh, Donica. Tommy, to give a mention as well, we had the All Ireland Club Ladies Football Final last weekend, St Brendan's Park on Saturday mm. as well. Was watching here in the office. Um, I thought uh, Cl- Clonburn were excellent. Um, yeah. Morn Abbey were going for three in a row. I uh, had been perhaps a little bit lucky a couple of years ago when the sides met to come out on top by a point. Livy mm. Divley scores five points during the game. All right, Morn Abbey scored a penalty just before half time, which kept them in touch. But the Galway champions uh, went on to win in the end. And again, I think it's great to have that little rivalry now. They've met in two of the last three years in All Ireland finals. I've no doubt that Morn Abbey will be coming back next year uh, to try and get the trophy back again. Uh, again, I thought that was a really good ladies' football final we had last week. It's class. And that rivalry is something that needs to be fostered. Like, um, it's so important at a club level as as well as a county level. Like Shane Renan and, and the Morn Abbey team, I've been listening to them talking after they absolutely annihilated Dunboyne. And I know maybe on a on a superficial level you were looking at the Dunboyne story and, and probably comparing it to the Mead women's team this year who came from nowhere to win the All Ireland. So maybe Dunboyne were just that bit further away than Mead were. But Moin Morn Abbey, like, didn't give them a sniff, didn't give Emma Duggan or Vicky Wall a chance in that game. And uh yeah, like it was surprising to see the, the the difference in the scoreline at the end of the game. You know, I thought that would have been a much more competitive. Um, I thought Morn Abbey would have been much more competitive in that final. I thought it would have been a bit closer. Um, but yeah, like is it is that what it is? Is it is it two that met in two of the last four finals? Yeah, and in the final a couple of years back, it was just the one point between them. The one point. And I think Clonburn were always looking back and saying that's one that maybe slipped away and it can be difficult to get back into a final again. But as it worked out, it conspired that they went back into a decider and I thought Louise Ward particularly gave them a great platform out around the middle of the field. They won freeze. The aforementioned Livy Divley I thought was excellent. She was named as player of the game, understandably, after she scored five points for them. And uh, really at no time, even when Moore and Abbey were coming back into it in the second half. It, do you know what it reminded me a little bit of if you saw the game between Kilmico Crokes and Porrick Pierce's? where at various different stages Porrick Pierce's were able to get back to a point in the second half but Kilmico were able to keep them at arm's reach and it seemed every time that it was coming down to the minimum deficit a point would be scored at the other end to just relieve the pressure again a little bit and that's the way Kilkerney Clumburn played at the weekend I thought they were uh, excellent and very much deserving of their championship and they had some players involved in their management that were on the Galway team back in 2004 who won an All-Ireland Ladies Football title so it's amazing how these people stick around in their club even after they retire and we talk about Mark Vaughan earlier on it's very very difficult to step away from being involved in your club and the I, glory you can have I hadn't realised Vaughan was, was still in the mix yeah you're it's so right like it's it's uh it's incredible service that they're given, you know. Like we we did a list earlier on of some of the top footballers in the in the smaller counties outside of Division Three and Four. I know I was plaguing you last night for a, a bit of a steer in a couple yeah, of places. Not not like, to give it away too much because people can go onto the off the ball YouTube and actually watch back that section from OTBM mm-hmm. this morning. But who did you pick to give it away slightly as your top footballer outside the top two flights? Well, the top footballer outside the top two flights is Nile Murphy. That's who I went for this okay. week. Fly goes Nile Murphy. I just think he's one of those players um, who. We see him perform on the big day against Galway and Mayo, where Sligo are getting hockeyed, and you kind of sleep on the football ability that he has. John Heston was number two, okay. um, and Heston's one of those players that I think we've lost to the championship structures in, in a lot of ways. Like He's had his big days in Crow Park, or he's gone up against Dublin in Leinster finals, but we just haven't seen enough of John Heston, and enough people haven't seen him. And um, yeah, like that, Mick McCann is another one, 36 years old, still 
running the show for Antrim in midfield. And uh, just when you mentioned the service that you know players are given to county or clubs, it, it's incredible to see it. Like and that Clon Burn story as well. Um, I didn't see the final at the weekend, but it is it is brilliant to see them winning it because I actually did expect more Abbey to just come through after annihilating them the way that they did. Well, look, fingers crossed John Heston can uh, put his niggly injuries in the winter behind him, even though he played very well for St. Lomans, even mm. with those injuries, and uh, he can come back to full force and maybe take number one spot. Uh, if he's not playing in Division 3 or 4 next year, Westmead getting off to a good start with a win against Wicklow last weekend. That's our lot on the Club Championship show for this Wednesday morning. If you missed any of the show, you can watch us back on OTB social channels or check out the GA stream on the OTB app and in our podcast section. Show is brought to you by AIB, and we'll be back next Wednesday from half past ten. The Club Championship Show on OTB Sports in partnership with AIB, proud sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships. Hashtag the toughest.